My name is William Justice. Today, we're gonna to be creating some text animations and talking about fears. It's October, Halloween is coming, time for everything scary and frightening. You know, the things that give you nightmares and keep you up at night. I'm so glad you came to see me. I have to ask, what scares you most about DaVinci Resolve? Well, um, it's fusion. It, try to dig a bit deeper. Can you give me more? Fusion expressions. Um, yeah, fusion expressions. So do you mean like this, where you have this object twice the size of this object? Or maybe you get them to move in the opposite direction? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So when you think about expressions, how does it make you feel? I, I get this this sick to my I get this sick to my stomach feeling. I, I start feeling really really dizzy. I I just I want to run away. And, I want to run away and hide. I just, I just want to get away from it. I've seen this many times before. It's very common. It's okay, just relax. Close your eyes and I want you to go back to the first time you had this fear about DaVinci Resolve. I'm at my desk and I'm working on a project. I go into Fusion and I look in the property inspector area. I right click on a property and this menu pops up. It has all these different options and at the bottom, it says expressions. I'm not, I'm not feeling so good. I have a video all about expressions. You can check it out right here. It might help you out a little bit, but I think we need to go a little bit deeper with you. You may understand the basics of expressions, but it takes a little bit of practice and experience to know when to use them so that you're comfortable with them. And remember, we're just setting up a simple math relationship between two properties. Well, I, I'm pretty good at basic math. It's time to face your fears, and I promise. The more you practice, the more times you see it, the easier it's gonna get and the more comfortable you're gonna be. I want you to check out my new video and see if that helps you out a little bit. Okay, tell me, how do you feel? Oh, so much better. C can I schedule another appointment? Sure, click the subscribe button for more videos about DaVinci Resolve and Fusion and make sure that you like this video. So everyone else watching, what's your greatest fear about DaVinci Resolve? Comment below and let me know. I have some fears of my own. I'm gonna be making a video about that real soon. Even if you do know expressions, I think there's some fun and interesting things that you might like in this video. We're gonna be doing a text animation where we turn it into a blob and explode it back out. Thought it would be a good opportunity to mix it in and use some expressions. So there's a little bit of expressions and some text animations. A couple different things for you. So let's go. Okay, we're gonna start with a blank fusion composition. We're gonna set up the animation and then we're gonna throw on some expressions and I'll show you how it all works. We're gonna take the background node and drag it into the node area, connect it up to the media out, take a text node and drag the output of the text node onto the output of the background. We're gonna create a merge for us so the text will be right on top of the background. Let's enter the text in the inspector, set it to explore. Next, we're gonna change the font. With the text node selected, we're gonna hit the blur icon here to add a blur node right after the text node create some more space. So with the blur, we can blur out the text. After the blur, hit control space and type in bitmap. By default, the bitmap is added as a mask on the blur. We don't want it, we're not gonna use it as a mask, so let's disconnect that by clicking on the front of the blue line. We're gonna take the bitmap and drag it right in between the blur and the merge. Hold the shift key to connect it. We're gonna use a combination of the text, blur, and bitmap to create the blob look. So let me show you how we do that. Click on the blur and we're gonna increase the blur settings a little bit, like that, and go to the bitmap. Let's open up two windows here. We have the text blur over here, final output on the right-hand side. So what the bitmap is doing is it's taking a look at the alpha channels from the input, which is the blur, and it's gonna help us create a mask. All we need to do is adjust the low and high settings on this bitmap to create our effect. So we kind of get a blob look there. So what happens is the more blur we add, the bigger the blob is, and the less blur we add, the smaller it is. So by animating the blur size, we're gonna be able to create the blob image. We can also go to the bitmap and adjust how we want it right now. The, uh, the edges are fairly sharp. We can sharpen them up by putting the low and high closer together. If we space them out a little bit more, we're gonna get more of a faded out edge. I like the sharp ones. So let's go with that right now. You can adjust this to be whatever you want. Since the bitmap is converting our text and blur to a black and white image, that means that if we come into the text and try to change the color, the color changes for the text right here 
and the blur, but once we get into the bitmap, it's converted to black and white. So what we're gonna do is use the bitmap as a mask on a background node and create our color that way. So let's disconnect the bitmap and we're gonna drag a background node, connect the background node into the merge and take the output of the bitmap and put it into the mask node on the background. Okay, so to see what we have now, let's hit one on the background. The background is black, so as we change the background color, so we use the bitmap as a mask on our background and the background color is what's gonna show through. Let's set that up as a gradient. Let's go back to one viewer and this is what we have now. So we'll just adjust the blur to see what it looks like. Boom. With text one selected, hit control C to copy it. Click off of that and hit control shift and V and that's gonna create an instance of this text. Let's go to the instance and we're gonna right click on styled text and say de instance. So that means we can change the text for this instance and let's type in resolve. Now we just need to use a node that lets us transition from text one to instance text one. We're going to use a dissolve to do that. Click on the node area, hit control space and search for dissolve. So there's our dissolve node. We're gonna take the text one and put it into the background of the dissolve. And we're gonna take the instance one and put it into the foreground of the dissolve. The output of the dissolve is gonna go into the blur. And that's our basic node setup. That's gonna do everything we want. So you'll see that when we hit dissolve, we can switch between the foreground and background, and we're already getting a little bit of an effect. The way we want this animation to work is we want the dissolve to transition between the explore text and the resolve text. And as it's transitioning, right about when it's in the middle, right to, let's see, 0.5, so this goes from zero to one, so let's put it right at 0.5 in the middle. Right as it's in the middle, we want the blur to kick up to create this blob effect. As the dissolve goes all the way to one, we want the blur to drop back down. Now obviously you could keyframe this, but we're gonna set up an expression that's gonna make it a whole lot easier. And it's also gonna allow us to animate other properties of the text, such as the tracking size, um, rotation, or just about anything else that you want. So let's start with the blur. We're gonna have the blur change as the dissolve changes. So let's drop the blur back down. So we need to connect up the dissolve background foreground property to the blur size. It uses a really simple expression. Once we have that figured out, we're gonna be able to use it in all those other places as well. Let's click on blur and click the little pin icon. And that's gonna keep this area in the inspector so that we can connect properties and see what's going on. Let's select dissolve. So we have our dissolve on top and the blur on bottom. To connect these, all we need to do is right click on blur size and we're gonna choose expression. Basically, this is a box that lets, lets us put in a little bit of a formula to set exactly what our blur size is gonna be. So we could have it be 30 and just type that in and the blur goes to 30. Let's put it back to one. To connect this to the dissolve, all we need to do is hit this little plus box and we have this line and we drag it to whatever property we wanna connect it with. So we're gonna choose background foreground. And you see there it put in dissolve one dot mix. Now we don't need the one in the beginning, so let's get rid of that. And really this is just text. There's really no magic here. We could type this in and it works just the same. So if we get rid of it and type dissolve1.mix, it does exactly the same thing. In Fusion, you can reference any property using the node name with a period followed by the property name. In this case, the node name is dissolve1 and the property name is called mix. So once these are connected, you'll see that as we change the background foreground property here, the blur size is changing. It's at zero and as it's going to one, you can see the dissolve is gonna change. So now we've set up a relationship so that the blur size is always gonna be 40 times whatever the background foreground setting is. But this is not exactly what we wanted. It's kind of halfway there. As it gets to 0.5 on the background foreground, we want the blur size to be at its max, and then we want it to go back down to zero. Okay, it's time for a bit of math. I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. We're gonna drive everything off of the dissolve1.mix property. It goes from zero to 0.5 in the middle to one at the end. For the blur size, we're gonna want it to start out at zero. When the dissolve.mix gets halfway through at 0.5, we're gonna want it to be like 40 or really whatever number we want. And then when dissolve1.mix goes to one, we're gonna want the blur size to go back to zero. That's gonna blur it up and then take the blur down as the dissolve is going through. I'm gonna show you a few quick formulas. Feel free to pause the video and plug in the numbers, just kind of see how the formulas work. The main idea here is not this specific expression or these specific properties. I just want you to understand how you can take any property and add a formula to it so that it changes in relation to another property. One minus two times dissolve one dot mix. What that's gonna do is it's gonna start out at one, go to zero when dissolve one dot mix is 0.5 right there, and then go to negative one. We don't want this to be negative one. So all we need to do is use the ABS function. That stands for absolute value and whatever you pass it, if it's a negative number, it's gonna return the positive version of it. We're gonna go from one to zero 
in the middle of the transition to one at the end. So if we can have our expression start at zero, the blur size is gonna be zero. So we just need to invert what we have. So we're gonna do one minus the absolute value of our expression. And that's gonna change it to where we're gonna start at zero. As the mix goes to 0.5, it's gonna go up to one. And as the mix gets to one, it's gonna go back to zero. If we multiply that times 40, we're done. The blur size is gonna be zero, then 40, and then back to zero. So just a little bit of math there. I hope that was easy to follow. I'm, I'm trying to explain this so you can kind of see and understand examples where these different things can be used. A lot of it is looking at what you're doing and trying to understand when you have those kind of relationships between different properties. So let's take our formula and put it into the blur. So instead of doing dissolve one dot mix times 40, we're gonna do our zero one zero formula. So we're gonna do one minus what we came up with times 40, save that off. And now we have this pretty much done. So when the dissolve is zero, we get that right in the middle. We're gonna get our max blur, the max blob look, whatever we come up with. And then when it goes back down to the end, blur goes to zero and we're back to the next word. So we got explore, resolve. To make this property, we're gonna go to frame zero and we'll put the dissolve at zero, keyframe it, go to frame 10 and keyframe background foreground. Let's go to frame 30. So it's gonna be about 20 frame transition. And we're gonna take this and move it all the way to one and go to like frame 40 and keyframe at one. Let's see what we have. Now we're gonna add some rotation and adjust the tracking. So let's uh, click on text one. And because both of these are connected, you can we can adjust the size and it adjusts on both of these nodes because this, this is an instance. So anything we do on text one, it's going to apply to our instance over here. So let's go hit the paintbrush icon and scroll down to rotation. And we're gonna open up position. We can change the Z rotation. And that's gonna spin those letters around. First thing we're gonna do is adjust the pivot. So we're gonna move the, the Y pivot up so that it's pivoting around the center of the letters. A little too much. So now we have that rotation there. Let's tie the rotation in. So you see right here, the rotation goes from zero to spinning all the way around is 360. If we take whatever the dissolve is and multiply it times 360, there's our relationship and it's gonna spin all the way around. So let's right click on Z, choose expression. And here we're gonna type in dissolve one dot mix right there, and we're gonna multiply it times 360. So now as our animation is playing, you see right here, this is our rotation. And as the dissolve changes, the rotation changes and we have spinning letters. The next thing we're gonna adjust is the text tracking. So let's go back to the text tool, look at it in the inspector, hit the T for the text settings, and we can adjust the tracking. So we can push it in and make it go out. So this is our you know zero case, one, and then back to zero. Now the reason you might want to do this is, so let's say you have some text over here, and we this is longer text, and we want to transition between it. It looks a little weird because you have this longer text out there. So if you move the tracking in, all right, Resolve just crashed on me, had to reset a few things, but we are back and going to continue. With the longer text, sometimes it's nice to be able to adjust some of these other things such as the tracking so that it kind of collapses in on itself and then expands back out with whatever word you're wanting to have. We're gonna use a similar type of expression to do this with the tracking. So let's get it to back basically where our minimum, we want the minimum tracking to be. So we'll make kind of a put our blob right in there. Right click on tracking and choose expression. So 0.63 is our minimum value. So what we need to do is add to the tracking as our dissolve is going through the transition. So for this one, we're gonna use the 101 expression. We're gonna do 0.63 plus some stuff. All right, so there we go. So we have our longer text and it collapses in on itself and expands out. But you can see it's doing just a little bit too much. Um, so for this one, we don't really wanna add one. This is, this is gonna be one to zero to one. So let's cut that in half by dividing it by two. And we get our text a little bit closer together there. And like I said earlier, you could use this for really anything in here. We have the basic animation set up and there's a couple more things we can do. Um, first, if you click the spline option at the top, you can adjust these curves to kind of smooth out the animation to make it look a little bit nicer. My favorite part about this setup is it makes it really easy to add more text in without changing our node structure. All we need to do is toggle the dissolve back and forth. And when one of the text nodes is not being shown, we change the text on it and then it'll transition to it. Let me show you how this works. Let's, uh, I'm gonna toggle the dissolve back and forth for a little bit here. I've added some keyframing to flip the dissolve between the foreground and background. So what we need to do is, let's see this first part here, it says explore and that's the text one. The next part, let's move along in the animation. 
right in here, we have it say longer text. So while longer text is being shown, all we need to do is click on text one and change explore. We're gonna keyframe it, go one frame over and let's change it to hot dog. So when we play the animation, it's gonna transition from longer text to hot dog. Now that we're viewing hot dog, we're gonna click on instance text, where it's the other one, longer text. We'll keyframe it, move over one frame, and we'll change it to fusion. So we can keep going with this as long as we want and put in as much text as we want, do all the timing. The best part here is that all we're doing is keyframing the dissolve and changing the text. We don't have to go in and change any of the blur, rotation, any of those other settings because it's all baked in with that expression. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit from this video. Comment below and let me know what you think. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, filmmaking, and whatever other kind of fun stuff comes into my head. Thanks for watching.